We are on location at Journeyman Distillery, and we are with our guest for this week, Tiffany, who is the general manager here. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, guys. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. Our pleasure. Thanks for being another mover and shaker on our video blog. So, go ahead, Lori. You've got some um, questions. Yes, actually, Tiff is a very awesome mover and shaker, and uh, she is the new general manager here at Journeyman Distillery. This this building, actually, and the whole block that we're on has a really cool history. Would you mind to tell us about that? I history? would love to tell you guys. Uh, this is actually called the Featherbone Factory. It was built in 1880. Uh, E.K. Warren was the owner of the Featherbone Factory, and they made corsets and buggy whips here, if you can believe that. Uh, back in the day, corsets were made with whalebone as the structure, and I know corsets really aren't that comfortable to begin with, but I can't imagine how uncomfortable it would be with bone as the structure. So E.K. Warren had the idea to take turkey feathers and he used the structure of a feather to actually so cool. build corsets and he reinvented the way that they were designed. Uh, he had offices all the way from uh, London and Sydney back here to Chicago and Three Oaks. That is such a cool history. It is, it's wonderful. And when did Journeyman move in here? Journeyman's been here for about five years now. Okay. Uh, we've been open to the public going on three years. Um, of course, we came in, uh, we did a little uh, update to the space, uh, got our still put in, and started making whiskey about five years ago. That is awesome. And tell us your story with Journeyman. You didn't start off as a general manager. No, I actually came in uh, to help with their retail. Uh, we sell a lot of uh, bottled spirits here. We do t-shirts, glassware. Uh, so I came in, I uh, helped with their merchandise, and. You know, two and a half years later, I've worked my way up the ladder to general management. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a true mover and a shaker. That's a mover and a shaker. And we actually have a bottle of some really cool whiskey. Why don't you tell everyone oh, about wow. this? Oh, wow. Yeah, the Federalist 12 whiskey. Uh, so this is actually George Washington's recipe for rye whiskey. Uh, good old George. Uh, not only was he our first president, he uh, knew how to make some good spirit, um, and it was very profitable for him, in all honesty. Uh, so we were able to get the original recipe, and we recreated it. Uh, we distilled it last year on President's Day, and it was actually released uh, this year on President's Weekend. Um, we only had one barrel, so very limited uh, special batch here. Uh, we still have about 50 bottles in-house. It did not get distributed this year. It is so smooth. Um, yeah, we, we just, just tried we just it. tried it's some. Wonderful. It it's is fantastic. wonderful, and it's very aromatic. It's like very delicious. And Big bold very finish. Good. So a lot of people know us for our Ravenswood rye whiskey. We already have an in-house rye. The difference between that whiskey, uh, Ravenswood rye is 60% rye, 40% uh, wheat grain. Well, good old George, he used corn rather than the wheat. So the corn adds just a bit of a boldness. It really yeah. finishes so finishes. well. Yeah, so, so cool. Tell us about the other types of spirits you do here. Well, you know, we don't focus just on whiskey, although we, we are well known for our whiskeys, our bourbons. We even have a Three Oaks single malt scotch. Um, we, we have clear spirits, too. You know, our gin was just voted the best gin in the Midwest. Um, we have a barrel-aged version of that gin. Um, we do a rum. It's a Jamaican-styled rum. Um, it has some nice molasses notes that really shine great for tiki drinks in the summer. Uh, vodka. Vodka is so soft and smooth. Yes, it's very good. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, jalapeno humdinger and over at Spire they do this great uh, lemonade shake up with it. Oh my gosh, it's my favorite cocktail to go over and, there and have. And actually the gin, the Billberry, what's the proper name? I always Billberry say. Black Hearts Our, Gin. That gin is the number one seller out of all your spirits at Spire. We oh, sell great. more of that than anything else. And the aged gin too. It's, it's just, we can't keep it in stock. Uh, both are great, and we have your entire line at the restaurant, which is great for us to have. I know. Yeah. Oh my gosh. One of the only locations in the area that you can actually drive to and find every single product. And I mean, like, even the limited stuff. Except last for this. Time, last time I was there, you even had the Kissing Cousins, though. <laughs> oh did, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. So it's just refreshing to go in and find those cocktails on the menu and, and doing it in a, a way that really makes our spirit shine. Well, the focus of Spire is to, to showcase all of these wonderful local makers, and your spirits at Journeyman are um, some of the best we've tried around, so we'd like to showcase it. You have your own shelf with all your spirits on it at Spire, so... Um, you do. You have your own shelf. You They're all lined up right yeah. there. Yeah. And the, with the, you know, Bill's tie-in, you mm -hmm. know, our owner here is Bill Welter. Uh, he started in the industry golfing, and so 
it's just weird how everything ties back in. Here's Spire, Legacy Golf Course. Yeah. Um, so to see our shelf of bottles with the golf course in the background, I mean, it just ties in beautifully with how Bill got into the industry. You know, his he went to, to Missouri State on a golf scholarship. Uh, he ended up moving to St. Andrews, Scotland, so he could golf at these courses by day. And he ended up uh, waiting tables at a restaurant at night. And... That's kind of how we stumbled into this industry, we met the right person who was moving on to Australia to open a golf course and a uh -huh. distillery. Oh, wow. And so that's how we learned the trade, was was a good friend of his, Greg Ramsey, who was getting into the industry. And he found out not only does he enjoy playing golf and drinking scotch and whiskey, but he liked making it too. And that's how we ended up here, was his tie with golf. And we're happy that he ended up here. This is great. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the services you can provide here, because I know you people can rent this space out. Yes, yeah. So not only do we have production here, you see behind us, uh, the front of the house is actually a high-end cocktail bar. Uh, we fresh squeeze all of our juices, we make our own simple syrups, uh, we try to go back prohibition style, but also come up with our own new classic twists. Um, we have uh, a little bit of food here, little bites to eat, uh, to complement the, uh, the different cocktails we're serving, and we rent our space out. Um, we have brides, we're, we're almost fully booked for fall of 2014, um, you know, but we do more than just rehearsal dinners and receptions. There's opportunity to have private tours here, uh, corporate functions, bachelor parties, yeah, I mean, you name it, yeah. come on down and we'll do it. It's absolutely a cove of treasures here. I mean, the rich history is so amazing, and the building itself is beautiful. The full line of everything that you guys have is just amazing. It's such a treasure, and you yourself are a treasure. Oh, and thank we're you. so happy. Also, we wanted to thank you for hosting the LOK Dreambird party, feather oh party my here. Oh gosh, what a good. Uh, that was such a feel good event, mm -hmm. and it was it such was. a beautiful time. And uh, being back in here just makes me remember. The great memories that we all created together and I just thank you so much. Well thank you. And we're so glad that you are a mover and shaker and we represent just local amazing people and products yes. and places. How can we find Journeyman on Facebook or online? You just look up uh, Journeyman Distillery. Uh, we should be one of the first things that pops up. Um, we do have a Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter, uh, website. <coughs> um, we've been so far we're in Pinterest, Vine, we try to do a little bit of everything. We can find these videos, um, watch us making a cocktail behind the bar, and try to recreate that experience at your own home. Sure. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, we'd like to thank you for being a part of Movers and Shakers this week. Oh, my pleasure. It's been fun, and we're uh, any excuse to get us up to journeyman, we're yes. always happy to do it. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Up next, we're going to have a, a segment from the artist. Laura's got some stuff we're going to look at, right? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. This is the segment that you like to call, let's start the fuck over. <laughs> this is the segment of our show that we like to call the segment from the artist. Yes. And today Laura's the artist. So Laura's got a, this is gorgeous Laura. Thank you so much. I really kind of have fallen in love with this piece. It's, um, it's a swan and, um, I, I got this wood, um, I'll talk about one of my ecological partnerships really quickly. I got this wood from my good friend Dan Plath. He is um, the head of the waterways, principal waterways up at Nice Source, up the Nipsco Beach shore there in Michigan City. And uh, those guys have to do like a routine cleanup of all the wood that blocks the tributaries that come in through Trail Creek and then bleed out into Lake Michigan. So the wood actually causes lots of problems. And these guys have harvested it for me and I go in there with my flatbed truck, I pick it up and then I, I bring it back to my studio where I've been making lots of things out of it. I love this swan. It um it looks good from all angles too, I think. Now this is something new. You've not made something like this before. No, this is new. This is part of um it's part of my series of birds that are on stands. So this is a stand bird. And it uh, makes it a little bit easier to put it in your house. And not most people have 16-foot chimney walls like we do at Spire, where those big birds are. But this is um, this is a beautiful piece that would fit nicely on a, a mantle or any other place in your home, like even a console table with yeah. a mirror. It's a nice showpiece. It's a talking point. It's great. I think it's, it's got a lot of character to it. It does look, look like this piece. Yeah. 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 
And look at this, I even have like, I left some of the old brush on there that came off. This came from an old house. It was one of the um, old floor joists that were in the house. And um, I actually love using this for a stand because it truly builds this like floating sensation. One, one thing that's nice is, I mean, if you just take just driftwood and reclaim the wood, Looks and good from the back too. you just look at these sticks or these logs that you get, it just look like a log. But you can take yes. something that looks like a log, and I mean, it actually does look like the head of a bird of a swan. It's got the eyes, and it's like a beak here. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's true. You know, it's not that we were talking before earlier, it's not that these take a lot of resources in terms of material to create, it's that they require a lot of magic, which is, is hard to find. It's not readily available and it's quite scarce actually. So when, when I do my sculptures, I really find pieces that have special feeling to them and special shape and right away I see them and I know what to do. And, um, you know, it's hard to find certain pieces that fit all together, but somehow I do. In that pile and in my bandsaw, after I get them back to the studio, I really start to see where things can fit together. So, this is one of my favorite pieces. I just love it. I love everything about it. Like, I love the floating feel. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yes. And if you want to buy this, I can talk to you, right? Yes, you guys can just give me a shout to Earth Angel. Um, Eco Art Studio by Laura Marie Panazzo, and uh, I have these in small, medium, and large sizes. And uh, you'll be able to follow what I'm posting um, as the week goes by. My store is getting full now. It's yeah. Thank you, Laura. So, well, thank you, Brad. Thank, thank, thank you. For out to show us today. Yeah. And I think we're going to head back to the restaurant, Spider, and we're going to find and finish with our closing remarks. That sounds good. That sounds good. Let's hit it.